I'm Ashwani, and I'll be talking to you about the inductive bias of sparsity in deep learning as it applies to federated learning. I'll be doing this through the lens of two of our recent papers that address existing problems in federated optimization with the use of principled update sparsification. These problems are security and communication efficiency, which along with privacy, typically make up the triumvirate of systems-focused research questions in federated learning. The first paper I'll be covering is SparseFed, mitigating model poisoning attacks in federated learning with sparsification. First, I'll give an underview of our threat model. A number of attacks have been proposed on federated systems in recent years, and we aim to evaluate against all of them. Byzantine attacks ex have existed for as long as distributed machine learning has. And in Byzantine attacks, the attacker's goal is to prevent the model from converging. In data positing or model poisoning attacks, the attacker's goal is to modify the behavior of the model on a subset of inputs drawn from the test distribution while maintaining accuracy on the rest of the inputs. Backdoor attacks instead modify the behavior of the model fundamentally such that a backward model might mass classify all instances of seven as one in the MNIST dataset. The model replacement attack is more ambitious because the attacker wants to replace the entire global model with a model of their design. We also introduced the collusion attack where multiple attackers participate in the same iteration of federated learning and collude with each other. This is a graphic of the sparse-fed algorithm, which is a combination of global top case sparsification, L2 norm clipping, and federated averaging. Devices compute local gradient updates, which can be the composition of several steps, and these updates are clipped to a specified norm. The server aggregates all these updates and then only uses the top K coordinates to update the global model. In our paper, we provide a theoretical analysis of why sparse-fed improves the robustness of federated learning. As recent work has observed, attacks succeed by alternating the optimization path of the model. We show that because sparse-fed updates only one in 1,000 coordinates, models trained with sparse-fed do not drift very far. We also prove convergence analysis for sparse-fed, specifically that it converges asymptotically at the same rate as SGD. In our empirical setup, we train resident models on MNIST, Fashion MNIST, Federated Extended MNIST, CIFAR 10, and CIFAR 100. We aim to train models that, in the absence of attacks or defenses, obtain state-of-the-art accuracy. We train models in the cross-silo and cross-device settings. In the cross-silo setting, data is distributed IID across 1,000 simulated devices, 10 of which participated each iteration. In the cross-device setting, data is distributed non-IID across 10,000 simulated devices, 100 of which participated each iteration such that each device has data from one class. This is a challenging optimization setting. And in order to train models which obtain high accuracy, we need to make use of modern optimization techniques such as learning rate schedules and momentum. We tune all training parameters such as the learning rate, number of iterations, et cetera, on CIFAR 10 and transfer these parameters to other data sets. We first show the impact of varying the key hyperparameter in sparse-fed, which is the number of co coordinates updated k. Choosing k correctly is important for convergence because we make use of momentum factor masking, which means that as k approaches the number of model parameters d, we do not use any momentum and the model does not converge. When the model does not converge, the attack does not succeed because the rest of the devices are constantly overriding all the parameters in the model. We compare sparse-fed to existing defenses of trimamine, boolean, and norm clipping on the model poisoning attack. Sparse-fed reduces attack accuracy significantly when compared to the next best defense. When we compare the distances between the poisoned and unpoisoned versions of the model, we see that the, the attacker is able to shift models trained with other defenses significantly more than sparse-fed, which validates our theoretical guarantees. We next evaluate the Byzantine attacks on the cross-device setting and shows the colluding attack we consider, which uses PGD, is very effective at increasing test error, but sparse mitigates the Byzantine attack as well. Furthermore, even when we use extreme sparsification, sparse does not degrade test accuracy by much more than other defenses. And less conservative sparsification, which as we showed in the previous figures, still mitigates the attack, hardly degrades test accuracy at all. We also include comparisons to defenses which do not meet our criteria for test accuracy, which includes differential privacy, crumb, and median. We now turn our attention to designing a communication efficient version of sparse FET. SGD is a paper I co-authored at ICML last year, which uses sketches to compress gradients. And we use the backbone of the algorithm to improve sparse -fed. Here we compare the Pareto frontier of the attack parameters that we tune, which includes the number of epochs of PGD that the attack does and the mini batch size, Again, sparse-fed implemented with true top K, which is the algorithm that we previously showed in experiments, and sparse-fed implemented with FETHSGD, which uploads sketches to the parameter server. We conclude that by combining sparse-fed and FETHSGD, 
we can obtain an algorithm which mitigates attacks and is communication efficient. Both of these algorithms were created by exploiting the inductive bias of sparsity in deep learning. That is, stochastic first order methods tend to produce updates which are sparse, and this presents an opportunity to increase both robustness and communication efficiency. Thank you. If you have any questions about the talk, please feel free to ask me.